Hi, and welcome to Queers and Soaps. I'm Eric, joined once again by Bevan, bringing you some more yeah. Dallas. <laughs> oh, yeah. Hey, guys. <laughs> um, season four, episodes nine to 12. Tell me a roll the credits, and we'll chat. Um, so this episode is the prodigal mother. What's this one about? <laughs> I didn't remember her coming back this soon. I, uh, I remember I that I... they, um, come back. She came, um, into it around now, but, um, I actually, I was sort of surprised at how much I was sort of, um, interested in these episodes. So not that like they're bad or anything, but I always, I don't know. I always remember after like who shot JR and all that, that it felt like it got a little bit, like they sort of like, you know, it died off a little bit. Not that it was bad, but just, it wasn't as sort of like full on, you know? Cause it was, yeah. Right. But I, I don't know. I actually, um, viewing them these time this time around, I've actually been enjoying it more and you can see more of the, um, I guess more of the character work, you know, what things mean when people say yeah. something, they're like, oh. you know, well, yeah. There's a lot, a lot that happens in these episodes and a lot of recurring characters that stay on for a long time. Yeah. Um, through these four episodes alone, it was, we got um, Rebecca, we got Jeremy and we got Afton, all like mm -hmm. that recurs throughout the whole series. Most of them, except for one. <laughs> yeah but, yeah but um so that's kind of cool that they got so many in season four i didn't remember it being like back to back to back but it was i seriously have like all these little post-its of like little little type of bios ready you know how i do that <laughs> so um okay so it starts out with remember ewing um 23 exploded in the last episode Bobby wants to get Ewing 23 back and running. JR doesn't. Mm -hmm. um, and neither does Jock because it'll give Cliff money and they want nothing to do with Barnes, blah, blah, blah. But Bobby's like, I'm running the company. I do what I want, whatever. It's also still costing money just to um, keep the site. Like, you know, um, what was it? I think in this episode, they mentioned that the fires are still burning. So, like, it's costing yeah. money to sort of deal with the problem still. And it just seems like, yeah. I, like it definitely is the cliff thing, but I also think at this point they just sort of see it as like a bit of like a it's we don't need to worry like fix like you know sort the problem out of the fires and everything, but we don't need to worry about that at the moment. Right. Um, Mitch is around and he just doesn't understand rich people um, because he's Poe. Um, Mr. Mackey, the Pam's detective, calls for her. Mm. And he's for certain, he's for certain that Rebecca isn't dead. Um, that she's alive in Houston. Bobby wants her to wait till the morning to go. They fight about it, as they do in all four of these episodes. Arr. Why do they got to mess with my Bobby and Pam? Like, they really hammer them in these episodes. Yeah. Um, Mitch feels the Ewings don't approve of him, and they're pretty correct. Um, <laughs> but, I mean, Pam does. Miss Ellie deals with them. Um, you know, they just don't know. I, I think, no, I think it's more like, you know, um, I mean, JR's pretty flippant about it. He's flippant about everybody. But, like, Jack I think too. it's more that just, yeah, it's just, I think that's, I mean, JR's, like, openly insulting, though. <laughs> like, um, yeah. But I just mean, like, I feel like um, the family just doesn't see it as like a legit match just because that all his goals and everything are very different to theirs. Like what they would see as life goals and stuff like that. Like he does, they're like, oh, a doctor, you know? And he's like, yeah, but I want to do research. And they're like, oh, right. the poor doctors, you know, it's like stuff like that. And like, it, it, no, they're, it, yeah. they're not, they're not JR is. <laughs> He's the one that constantly is like pissing on. No, him. but like they do have that thing with like it's his integrity versus like Lucy's sort of like um kind of optimism, naive optimism, you know? Well they they do pile it all on at the same time too, which always seems to frustrate Mitch and makes him run. 
mm. which we see a couple of times, which he already did at the pool party. With yeah. the rich friend. Yeah. Um, so yeah, Lucy defends Mitch to Jock. Jordan Lee tells Bobby they will get involved with Ewing as long as JR isn't involved, because you know, yeah. he screwed them in the last season. Uh, Mr. McKay and Pam spy on who could be her mama. And at first she thinks it's the maid in the mm. house, but it's actually the woman of the house. Um, I actually had to double take because because I'd seen it so many. I obviously knew who was playing um, Rebecca. Um, I had to re quickly remember that. Oh, of course, we would be assuming that Pam's from the low because Pam's low, like from the low part of town. I, <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> <Bless you. laughs> yeah, I was like trying to ignore it just a second ago, and then I'm like, no. Nah. <laughs> All right, so I will give the little thing that I have. It's Priscilla Pointer. Yeah. And what's the first? What's the first thing that you saw her in? Nightmare on Elm Street, number three. Yes. Yeah. I knew as soon as she, I, I, even <laughs> back when I was watching this in high school, when I, I saw her name, I'm like, oh, I wonder who Priscilla's playing because you know I hadn't seen it all before. I knew the name. And then she turned out to be Pam's mom. And I'm like, oh, it means hopefully she'll be around for a little while. <laughs> it's, it's so funny. I kind of felt the opposite. So I knew her, you know, she's a monster bitch in Nightmare on Elm Street 3. So when she was yeah. in this, I didn't like her. I'm like, I don't like this lady. I don't like her. She's a bitch. Because <laughs> I knew her oh, from yeah, she definitely, yeah, Nightmare Yeah, she definitely 3. is a nightmare. I was just keen. I was like, oh, my God, I know this. Like, you know, uh, it was just like the actor spot. You know, you see a lot of people Rebecca, over the course of Dallas. Rebecca, yeah, but I did do like the second watch of Dallas. I did appreciate her more. Um, Rebecca Barnes Wentworth, she plays. Mm. Um, she actually just turned 100 years old in, on May 18th. I did she see that. In. I saw a post. Mm -hmm. A lot of the horror, uh, horror pages and everything were like giving it up for her, as well as the soapy ones too. Yes. Um, she did one episode of Knott's Landing, which you probably know. Did you just rewatched them um, recently? Uh, I do don't remember? know if I'd be up to her bits yet. Like, I'm very slowly making it through. There's so much crap to watch. I mean, it's not crap, mm -hmm. but like, I've got stuff. Like, she so much stuff to watch. I forget if she's in, I think she's in the first season. She plays um, Ginger's baby, J Ginger's oh, baby. Oh, yes. Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah, yeah. I did see that. Yeah. Yes. I kind of believe that. Yeah. And she yeah. was a bitch in that. She was yeah, a bitch she in was that, actually. Uh, well, she was you the know, one tormenting Ginger. She was, but, like, I don't know, man. Like, that was all about her own guilt on her son, you know. I mean, I'm right. analyzing a different show now, but... You know, she she used to respond, yeah. But she, she just blamed Ginger for absolutely everything. That's all. Um, and I do have her last on t on screen TV appearance was a show called Cold Case here, um, in two thousand six. I like Cold she Case. Also, she also did a movie short in two thousand seven, um, and then the last two things that she did were like voice work. Mm. Um. So yeah. So she hasn't been active in what. Like, 16 years but she is 100 so whatever Hopefully yeah. she's retired and very happy somewhere yeah i think it's fair that she can rest for a little bit <laughs> <laughs> right but i knew you would never from nightmare 3 because uh, i'm a huge nightmare person i knew nightmares before i knew dallas so yeah d yeah same that's why i didn't like her when i saw her i was like <laughs> oh no that lady yeah. that's the mean doctor hey god I got listen people <laughs> that didn't believe in um, Nancy's uh, dream crap. Yeah, yeah. Um. So, so. Oh, um. Jr. joins Jock Ray and Punk at Cattleman's Club about the recreational land deal. That's going to mm. be ten million dollars to Kappa. <laughs> yeah. And well, Jock. this is where like. And this is where you start seeing JR um, forming his little plan to sort of under, start to undermine Bobby, which sort of plays out over the next couple of episodes. Yeah. Um, JR says they may not have the money. Uh, Pam calls Rebecca to meet up. They talk on the phone. And I guess they make plans for her to go over there. Um, yeah, she has to come over after like five, five, uh, like in the afternoon sort of thing. Yeah. Yeah. Lucy and Muriel discuss Mitch. Um, 
Oh, Even Cam Muriel's Cam kind of slamming Lucy in that scene. That was like harsh. She's like, like you know, basically just yeah. telling her to like, yeah, dr- like drop Mitch and everything like that. And I'm like, they, like, no. Oh. <laughs> like everybody was on her about him. You're right though right. about that. Yeah. Um, Pam sees Rebecca, and Rebecca says that she never had any other husbands. And Pam goes on this whole spiel, um, like. I didn't know what I would say to you and mentions her brother and all this stuff and it's actually pretty and sad. It is very sad. Like uh yeah, it's not nice. Like yeah. No, and you could tell Rebecca knew but she didn't know what to do and then she just kind of stayed cold and firm. I and think like, that I ain't your mama. I don't even think that that's something that you need the context of the rest of the show to be able to see as well. I feel like the the way that scene plays out, it's like Pam is so sort of desperate and like not in a, I don't mean that in a bad way at all. She's just desperate to like connect and to, she's finally found her mother and you can sort of see Priscilla Pointer. She sort of, I don't know, she encapsulates that acknowledgement, even though she's in, she's denying it to her and it's mm-hmm. all, she doesn't really give anything away, but it's all in the face. It's so well done. I actually was, uh, yeah. I hadn't seen that scene for years. That's all. And it's really sad. And I just, um, I love the way they play off each other. They do really well. And like, and it's so sad because Pam just kind of almost sat like it. Cause she talks about, you know, how lonely she was like, not, you know, like wondering what she was like and everything and it's uh, it's right. very it's very pitying you know and then she just gets crushed and you're like oh and she, and she mentions everything with hutch mckinney and all of that so yeah she brings up the whole past yeah so and she just and all that and then like, that's what i mean like and you know um rebecca sort of it's all this acknowledgement without acknowledgement and it's just yeah i was like N- yeah it was so well done it was such a well done scene. Very sad, awful. It was. <laughs> really I, this, whole, this whole episode was really good. Um, Bobby talks to Les about getting more money. Mm. He's always needing the money. They always need money. That's all I feel like the storyline is. <laughs> it's always money for this, money for that. Like it's annoying. Yeah. Um, when you put like I never, I never paid too much like more attention like as I am now because I'm trying to understand the deals. But it really is all about that. It's like more money. JR's screwing his, with his money. Jock's screwing with his money. Like, it's just all the same kind of shit. Yeah, it's just that, uh, yeah, it's so, like, Bobby's stressing because there's not enough liquid capital to sort of actually invest properly in a lot of deals and stuff. And he has to move money around or, f- like, fix contracts or, um, you know, change the terms and stuff like that. And so, uh, like, it's... And it all comes at a time when like Jock wants to do his deals and stuff like that. And then Bobby wants to go and sort of invest with um, Jordan Lee again, uh, you know, in, in what was it? I can't remember what that oil well was or whatever, where it was, but yeah, whatever the yeah. one that he was I'm brought in on. It somewhere. Right. And it's just that um, currently they just don't actually have enough, like, a, like, you know, cash on hand essentially to sort of do it do everything and it's just creating all this like tension for bobby in terms of how to, to how does he keep to his prior contractual obligations and commitments and stuff right. and then you've got jr yeah. sitting there just undermining it all the whole time like yeah so yeah this the story with that is it's like was it jock once needs 10 million dollars to invest in the takapa land deal bobby needs 12 million dollars to get in with the cartel Jock gets to the bank first and gets the 10 mil. So now they only have 2 million left and Bobby has to scrounge for money. That's basically the storyline over the next and few Yeah. Weeks. And it's also because it's corporate money. So it's the company's money. It's not like personal money. So like, that's also why Bobby gets the shits about it because he wasn't consulted and he's technically. Right. Yeah. 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 Um, so Bob called, I uh, Bob. Bob. <laughs> Pam calls Bobby all upset and he kind of blows her off. Uh, oh, he does for the twentieth for the twentieth time, pretty much. Oh, I think um, this one was like this one is where like it's that moment where like you can sort of understand how busy he is and how stressed out he is, but it's like right. she's actually that's like a really serious kind of thing. Like yeah. just maybe finding just, out that your mom just denied you in a way, even though she said she's not her and she doesn't believe it. I guess anymore. Mm. 
Um, yeah. Uh, Luce, I put Lucy and Ray compare storylines because they are similar. <laughs> With yeah. uh, Donna being a politician and like and him and Rich, yeah, and yeah, not and. She Lucy slammed him on a bit unfairly in this scene, I think, too. Like, is this when they're out on the ranch? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, she slams him for that. And I was like, Phew. he was just, like, wasn't even being not, like, defensive or mean to her or anything like that. Right. She just slams him about Donna and then storms off. While, she, um, while saying, no, I'm not going to let Mitch go. I'm not going to, like, screw everything up like you did, right? And he's just like, right. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> Mr. Mackey says he's pretty sure Rebecca is her mom, is Pam's mom. Um, but he'll look into it and see, you know, if he, you know where he screwed up. Yeah, well, well like, wonder... it, it was, like, about something, like, it was, like, a really um, thorough investigation that he did for her and everything like that. He wanted to be sure he, she, he was um, as right as he could be, so he didn't really understand why there was any inconsistencies there, yeah. Right. So Ellen wonders why they are at Dave Culver's fundraiser because they don't support the liberals. Um, they support the Republicans. Yeah. Um, JR is basically like, we go where the power is. And it looks like, I guess, that Dave is going to be elected, I guess. Yeah, he's going to end up being a governor or something. Yeah. All right. Pam tries to talk to Cliff, then bumps into Rebecca and her husband at this fundraiser. Um. I like how she still kind of thought it is her mom because she's like, oh, that's Cliff up there about to give a speech. Uh, <laughs> Cliff well, yeah, that was something the way she does it. Because there was the chance of the lie as well. Like like the um, investigator said, he's like, I don't understand why it wouldn't be the case considering, but yeah. And again, you said with the facial expressions and you could tell like the way Priscilla Pointer did it, like Rebecca was just like, yeah. Like she felt back. like, you know. Mm. Right. Um, yeah. Bobby My path is coming to... back. <laughs> yeah. Bobby gives advice to Lucy about Mitch. Um, and then Mitch and Lucy make up for the 10th time. Mitch says uh, he loves Lucy. She says, marry me. He says, yeah, pretty much. And they um, do that really um, dramatic old movie role in the grass. Yeah. I actually, uh, the way that scene played out was like cool and everything. And then they did the cliche roll in the glass, uh, grass, and I just kind of had a laugh to myself. It's still fine, but I was just like, hey, it's like, wow. <laughs> they don't, they don't get that many sweet moments. So can you give them one? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, they really don't. Like, I feel like their whole, this whole, like every episode, they're like fighting about something, and they just started dating, pretty much. Um. Rebecca and Pam go for a walk. They, she talks about abandoning abandoning them. She says that her husband knows nothing, and that if he found out, it would pretty much break him and might kill him because he's old and unwell. Mm. Um, Pam goes to Cliff and says the detective was wrong because she's pretty much, you know, she has nothing to to give because she can't see Cliff, or she doesn't want her mom to see Cliff. Well, she's just gonna she, yeah, because Cliff won't. Cliff is angry, and if she's not gonna want to be a part of their life, then there's no real point in like dredging it all up for Cliff, you know. Which right, is fair, right? Which he seemed like he was kind of interested because the way he acted was like, oh, really? Like, oh, whatever. Yeah, I think he was expecting something. It not necessarily what what she was looking for, but something. But you know, Cliff's yeah. got that whole like it take like when she you know plays out and stuff cliff takes a while before he actually or like you know responds to it to any of it really yeah. properly you know so yeah so the next episode is executive wife which would be pam right <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah um alex ward we have um is the publisher of the magazine I couldn't remember his last him. name, but the first thing that popped into my mind, even though I saw Dallas first, was King Galen. Hmm? Is this in what? Is this is this Alex Ward, the um dude that's at the store and all that? Yeah, right. that's Galen. Uh, was it from Dynasty? 
Oh right, I knew I knew his face. He's the is he um what's his name's dad? Beg your pardon. Is he the prince's dad? Who is he? Yeah, yeah. Okay, I do remember him. Yeah, yeah. His face. He's in a lot of things. He's in a lot of seventies uh, and eighties things here. I did actually remember he was in this, but I um I couldn't remember exactly when. Um, but yeah, no, he showed up, and I was like, um, I was like, ah, oh, King Galen. <laughs> <laughs> wow, you really know your dynasty. <laughs> um, so he like runs the magazine or whatever that the store is involved with. Um, yeah, and he wants he wants to meet up with Pam. They're doing some kind of terrible photo session with fur and shit. Um, so we have Jeremy Wendell of West Star Oil um, comes in to give Bobby some business. Um, he wants, I forget what he wants. He wants something about so, gasoline. Um, basically, he was, I think, I think he was willing to buy the um, oil from his refinery at the uh, extra cost, uh, I think at the extra cost or something. No, not at, no, he was, he was at extra cost yeah. or something. Like he was going to give him a little extra bit more. $2. Yeah, a barrel or something like that. Um in in like you know it was like a it was basically an easy deal like he was just basically buying right. everything that the refinery was making but then bobby can't fulfill his obligations to his other uh some smaller dis distributors i'm pretty brady. sure yeah the brady and the independence yeah so, yeah so this is another big character that remains until like season 13 of dallas and we know he could be a mother effer i um, like i love jeremy wendell as like as that I do sort so. of yeah, he's such a he's he takes him a while to properly become I think the villain role. I do think that that's reserved for those last few years mm -hmm. predominantly. But it's he I yeah, he's every time he's on you're like, "Oh, okay." You know. All right. So I have a little I did a little investigating on him. Um he well I knew him. He was on Peyton Place as well, which I just started watching last year, but um he's David Schuster for a year of Peyton Place 65 to 66. His name is William Smithers, and he is still alive, too. Ah. Believe it or not. He's 96 years old. He played on Dallas from 81 to 89. The last thing he did was in the 90s, a show called Walker, Texas Ranger. Mm. Um, he also apparently was on Guiding Light in 1971 as Stan. Um, that's all I got on him. So, yeah, so he, he's a really good character. He's fun. Um, and again, like when I first started watching, I didn't really like them, but the second time around I watched, I really liked them this time or when I saw it the second time. Around. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Bobby forgot lunch with Pam again. He comes by and tells her that he can't do lunch. So Alex swoops in and asks her to lunch because he's there and he's, well, he asked her to lunch right before Bobby came. And she said no, because she had lunch. She's trying to put Bobby first, and he is not. She also just wants to kind of, like, actually talk with Bobby properly. Like, at this point, um, you know, she hasn't even really had a chance to talk to him about Rebecca. Like, he knows, right. but, like, they haven't, yeah, like, and she's just, yeah. Yeah, because of the way he treated the whole situation, which is insane. Because I feel like I'd be like, oh, my God, your mom's alive? Like, what? What? You know, like, I'd be, like, crazy, because that doesn't happen often. Mm. <laughs> Or I guess in this one, like now she's not alive, but whatever. But now Pam knows, but she would confide confide in him. But well, really it's been wanting to tell him, you know. It's like it's and and she had they haven't really had a proper conversation about it, you know. And obviously she wants to talk to talk about it. It's like a big deal. She can't talk to Cliff because she's fibbed to Cliff about things, yeah. you know. Right. Um, Sue Ellen and Bobby exchange words about power because she's still on Team JR and against Bobby. <laughs> Bobby and Pam have it out again later on. Um, that little bit with Sue Ellen and Bobby, I actually think is like a really good indication of kind of like the pressure that. So we feel terrible for Pam and stuff, but you've got this this thing that the Ewings do to each other where they just kind of just constrict and like test and test and you see it in like the passive form of like Sue Ellen's like half smart remarks about 
JR being like a shark and that Bobby is his little brother. You know, it's 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 that yeah. that thing. And yeah. And it, I think it was actually really good in the sense of like they're establishing that like because we already see like Jock and JR formed as like quote unquote like the Ewing men, like the business mo- moguls and all that. This is yeah. kind of how it forms. And I think in because we never really see Jock's transition to anything really um amoral or anything like that in say uh the the early years movie and then suddenly it's jim davies and i think bobby is like a really good example perhaps of like a transition that could have occurred with jock yeah um and, and she has a point like to what she does say to bobby but mm. she's still being a dickhead for now um lucy wants to marry next month and I like that she tells the family that. And she's like, well, I gave uh, grandma a month to plan my wedding. <laughs> like, Miss Ellie has nothing better to do. I actually like that whole scene. Because even Stylin's <laughs> like, well, that's awful kind of you. But, like, right, you know. Right. <laughs> and uh, they, uh, it's just the way they so, She's like, oh, we get, we're going to get married. And then Miss Ellie, even, she's like, oh, Lucy, no. Like, oh, no, Lucy. Like, are you the way she did it was like, a, are you okay? Like. <laughs> Is it because she's been engaged twice? Yeah. She hooked up with her uncle in the first season? <laughs> and second. Yeah. Um, so Mitch says that he loves Lucy. Um, Jock questions Mitch um, about, I guess, what he's doing. I guess that's where JR said, like, that one remark about um, totally blanking. Uh, marriage where he's just like you know how are you going to be able to like keep keep, you know keep her satisfied like you know taking care of in the way that she's accustomed to and all that and then jr says that something like yeah you know marriage isn't always easy isn't that right pam something like that just being like half smart and then pam is a dickhead back and she gives her best wishes to them and i like that she she like hugs them and like looks at jr (laughs) yeah yeah. (laughs) see his face um ray asked jock if he talked to bobby about taking money out for his recreation project that's the 10 million dollars and jock's like it's my company bobby brings flowers to pam and apologizes so it's looking good yeah a minute yeah to dinner um and it looks like it might be okay but it's not Ellie tries to talk Lucy out of marriage for Mitch. Um, mm. Basically, give him time. Go, let him go to school. Why do you have to do it now? You're burdening him because he's in doctor school and all that stuff. Um, Les tells Bobby that Jock took the $10 million out for the Tacapa land. Well, I don't think he said for the Tacapa land because I don't think he knows at that point what he was doing no. with the money. Yeah, um, no, and I think it's, yeah, yeah. And that there's $5 million left. Um, Jock and Bobby go at it. And then what does Jock say? Real power is something you take. And yeah. Like, Fuck you, Dad. <laughs> yeah, um, that, uh, very sort of, they go over that line later as well. Like it's something that sort of sticks with him. I'd be like, no, this is actually power that you gave me and kind of forced me to take. So I don't want it anymore. Fuck off. That's what I would yeah. say. But, you know, he's trying to keep the peace, I guess. Um, JR has Sue Ellen meet to buy her some jewelry. So they're still getting along. Everything's happy in Sue Ellen and JR land. Um, Bobby tells Connie what's going on with the company. I almost felt like that scene was for me because, like, he's, like, explaining exactly what's happening. I'm like, thank you, Bobby, because I really didn't know what was happening. (laughs) Um... (laughs) It was meant for like stupid people that um, didn't understand what the hell's happening in this business ship. Um, JR and Sue Ellen bump into Cliff and Donna. And he's like, I don't like that combination. And she's like, it won't last long because you won't let it. Um, and that's true. He just laughs at her and like, yeah, it's so true. Yeah. Um, Alex wants to do dinner with Pam. She says she can't. Bobby calls to cancel. Pam hangs up on him and calls Alex back 
consensual to dinner <laughs> yeah like oh yeah no actually my um schedule is opened up <sighs> yeah i said pam's had it with bobby's shit um jock regrets letting bobby in he says at one point um pam goes to work flowers are everywhere they're from alex to meet for dinner um brady that's the other guy that bobby's invested with or whatever that with the independent people yeah the smaller distributors um, yeah the smaller buyers he basically tells bobby he can't help him he doesn't want to screw brady for jeremy um alex had rented a restaurant for pam they dance and kiss and she leaves and that's all i have for that episode <laughs> yeah, so it sort of um, ends on that, like a little bit of like a romantic cliffhanger, if you will, like where mm -hmm. Pam's sort of like, you know, oh, what do I, you know, do, does this mean anything? I just kissed another man. And he rented out the whole restaurant for two hours for her. I'm like, yeah. He would have won me over. I'm like, yeah, oh, my exactly. I've been a dick for three episodes. Sure. We'll be <laughs> yeah. So the next episode is End of the Road, part one. Um, guest starring Audrey Landers as Afton. So see, it's like one episode after the other, pounding these yeah. people in. I'm like, damn. Um, the ladies are all with Lucy. That's um, Sue Ellen, Pam, and Ellie um, trying on her wedding dress, which I, was Miss Ellie's wedding dress? Is that I true? I think that's what they said. I think. Yeah, it was something. It was either way, it had been saved, yeah. essentially saved for her. Right. Um, sorry, I'm afraid he's gonna no. knock something over, like the phone. Um, they all discuss their weddings. Um, Pam says how they did justice of the peace. Um, stop it. Um, Sue Ellen's sounded like an all right wedding. Um, and then somebody says like ambition or obsession, but I forget. Oh, that's Pam about Ewing Oil. Ah, uh, yeah. Because she was saying how, like, he had ambition for the whatever, and she's like, or it could be an obsession. Mm -hmm. Which is kind of what Bobby's going through right now, as we see. Um, JR is snooping in Bobby's office as Bobby gets to the office, and Luella buzzes the buzzer for him to stop because um, she's working with him right now. Um, he tells Bobby he doesn't want to interfere with anything, but he wants to do what he can to help. Right. Yeah. Um, Punk, Jock, and Ray, and some other men talk about the Takapa project going on, um, which is like what, like build malls and homes and stuff. I don't know what the situation is. It sounds like it was just land development, as far as I knew. Like, I, I, I think I kind of blanked a little bit because i remember it but i just look i was in my head i'm just like oh yeah it, this is that land development stuff so it would be things like it shops and like it's probably yeah. similar to that thing on i'm not landing what's the thing that karen and um like abby own when they go uh, yeah i know what you're talking about yeah it's like that yeah i feel i think um Connie tries to get Luella back to the office, but she's busy at lunch banging JR. Um, and she tells JR that Connie's like crushing on Bobby, it seems. Yeah, like she thinks that, yeah, there's something there for Connie at least. Yeah. So I think um, JR might use that to an advantage at some point because I know Connie leaves soon. Because um, we get Phyllis. <laughs> Um, Alex is trying to get to Pam, but Pam's kind of like blowing him off, ignoring him and stuff. Jordan Lee comes for the contracts. Um, something about he'll need $50,000 in a couple weeks. I don't know exactly what the deal is. Um, uh, it's so like he only needs to front up for front up like a 50. I think it's something like he only needs to front up like 50 grand for like set up or something like that because they weren't expecting to. Um, need to drill straight away you know so it was like this is what we're expecting it to cost overall this is what you need right now and that's why like bobby for instance when he's trying to work it all out he says he has time to actually get the money right because, so but, he needs, but, 
So he needed the twelve million by the time they started, but the fifty thousand dollars is now. Yeah, is that but what it, it was? changes. It does change because Lee ends up calling him and telling him that the reports all came back. Like it all sort of happens a little bit quicker than they were anticipating, right, and that's right. why it becomes um, like that's why it starts to he starts to actually stress over like the millions because like he's looking at having to bring that into the actual investment when it properly starts. So at yeah. the moment, it all sounds like startup cost. Like that would be like the tests, the the like you know t uh, the the actual geological reports and everything like that, and then it's like the actual investment in of itself to actually drill in there. Right, and he at least that's the way I heard it. That's the way I heard it. Anyway, I could be wrong about that. <laughs> if he anybody else really um, knows a little bit about oil work, I've never worked a ring that, before, so that he's happy that Bobby is. He's dealing with Bobby and not Jr. He continues to say that, which I almost mm -hmm. feel like guilt's Bobby in a way because Bobby's kind of like, I don't know what I'm going to have to do <laughs> to get this money because he's saying well, that like, he has I the think, money, but he doesn't. I think a lot of that is for the audience's benefit because we're sort of supposed to see Bobby in this moral compromise while also hearing like how people sort of engage with him in business, like that, you know, like they don't see Bobby as the risk because, well, he's well, he's not. Like as Jr. is like it, it's like you can make money with Jr. but you're likely you're just as likely to get screwed over sort of thing. I think it's just that element of like Bobby having like a positive reputation because he's yeah. perceived as like oh you're a good guy or what do business with and then you see it just amplifies that whole compromise that he gets into in these episodes. And he wants to do the right thing and run it on yeah. up and up, which he keeps saying over and over again, but. Um, we see him break down in the next episode, though, about that. And it gets more and more difficult, and which doesn't help yeah. either, as we see later on when JR and Wendell meet up as well, because JR is obviously trying to, like, screw him over a bit. Right. Um, JR questions Bobby about the deal with no money. How are you going to pay that? Um, Bobby and Pam talk, but she goes off on him and leaves. Um... Mitch's mom and sister come to town. Um, his mom is played by an actress, Anne Francis, who actually starred in an Aaron's in one of Aaron Spelling's first shows called Honey West, uh -huh. um, based on a detective series. So Aaron, Aaron Spelling was talking, you know, uh, working on detective series back in the sixties, before yeah. Charlie's Angels and the Rookies and all of his other stuff that he did in the 70s so i'm telling you that man did some amazing shit um i kind of wish his kids like took over in that sense because could you imagine well i guess with his mind there's no one that can really match it because look how many shows it's like countless shows. yeah and he employed like actors and actresses from the 50s 60s and 70s through all of his shows like it's crazy and then had them reappear in like they so said like you know like he you say you look at it like his nineties run like the nineties shows he's um got so many of like this the late uh, not even late seventies the seventies and eighties actresses either playing like parents or these older figures um depending yeah. on which one it was Melrose or nine hundred two one zero for instance stuff like that yeah. um then you had you know even like even though it was more smaller time you had um smaller spin offs like Models Inc and stuff like that so like yeah. um yeah. And he got Linda Gray and Emma Sams for that. Yes. But, um, and Emma, you did so, you you did say Emma Sams, didn't you? Uh huh. Yeah, yeah. I thought so because <laughs> yeah. I was like, yes. I I thought you might have missed. Like I didn't know if I heard her name. I was like, yes. So <laughs> Linda yes. Gray and Emma Sams, definitely. <laughs> um. So anyway, the actress um died in 2011 of pancreatic cancer at 80 years old. No. Um, and she has 168 credits. And she wasn't big nice. in the soap, so this was her only primetime soap, from what I read. She's been, she yeah. has, like, a lot of, like, she was in Charlie's Angels, Wonder Woman, like, a lot of big series that I love here. <laughs> yeah. But, um, so anyway, she plays Arliss Cooper, Mitch's mom. Of course, they gave her, like, that crap name of Arliss. Really? <laughs> Sorry if anybody's named Arliss, but I just don't see it. <laughs> yeah. um, and if your name's Arliss, I'm sorry. Um, so they come to town, her and Afton. 
Um, Lucy asks Afton to be a bridesmaid. Pretty much right at the airport. <laughs> and she's like, oh, sure. So they seem yeah, to be yeah. working pretty well. <laughs> yeah. Um, Cliff and Donna have a land meeting, the Takapa crap, because they're trying to fight Takapa. So we have, again, Ellie fighting Jock, basically. Basically the same storyline as last season. Because it was like, wasn't it, with that man, with the, whatever. Yeah, instead it's um, the actual family in fighting sort of thing, yeah. Right. Um, Dave says no to the deal is basically what Donna is, you know, saying. Um, so you can vote for him or whatever. Um, Cliff and Sue Ellen talk. Um, they don't really say much. They just kind of catch up a little bit and see what's going yeah, on. Yeah, I think that was talk. actually as, as like, pleasant as it could sort of get. I don't really feel like... Like, obviously, they were talking around things, but I don't really feel like they were upset with each other. It was just like, you know, how are you doing? Sort of thing. Again. You know? Um, Bobby and this Tom guy meet about the 12 million bucks. And he says, like, his money's all tied up and whatever. I don't know. Some other oil bullshit. I have no idea. Um... We have this this guy named Red who works at like the independent gas station, um, and he's he's hearing that like Bobby will put the independents out of business, like there's rumors going around. So it does increase it, that he that it's the rumors are that Bobby's going to increase the prices of everything, which will put the independents out of business because a lot of people can't put up with that the two dollar increase, which is basically. Um, what Jeremy's trying to do, right? Well, Jeremy's going to pay him that with what he's basically offering him the deal he wants because they, they, so, uh, we learned through it. All, uh, we learned through it all, beg your pardon, that when Westar isn't fussed about the money because they have a stockpile, this is just going into their stockpile. That's what they want it for. So they, and they've currently got the money to just sit on stuff. So they are willing to pay the extra $2 and everything. And it just, yeah, it just means that Bobby doesn't have to wait for the money either, essentially. Yeah. And this is where Jeremy um, Wendell meets up with JR. Yeah. And JR is like, he wants to work out a deal, but I don't think he quite gets it out right now. Um, no, I think that's like where they discuss it and blah, blah, blah. But basically, yeah. it's like JR's going to, like, yeah, yeah. I can't remember how it works, know. but J yeah. Jay, I was going to yeah. push through the Wendell deals. In, yeah. Right. Um, Pam blows off Alex's phone call. She, like, carries up on the phone. She's trying to push him away because she kind of wants a piece. Um, or, she, or he's, like, I guess seductive to her because she's going through some bullshit with Bobby. Um, Lucy introduces the Coopers. Uh, JR already is flirting with Afton right in front of, right next to his wife, Sue Ellen. Yeah. Um, Arla says she's happy about being spoiled by Lucy. She's like, let her do it. Lucy was more than happy to do it. Your sister's never had this, so why not give her a break? Which Mitch is yeah. kind of lenient. He's like, sure, whatever. And she did yeah. look gorgeous in that purple dress, did she not? I was like, that's a Oh, no, it did. Dress. It did. I think we just sort of right. see, like, um, I think it's like a way of sort of saying, like, we see, like, kind of, it's just that poor man, rich, rich man vibe, you know, it's just that where they come from, you know, it also goes over, like, just how prideful Mitch is, which is understandable, but, like, it's just like, no, 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 like, you know, just let her enjoy it, because he even says, you know, I just wish I was able to buy it, and she just sort of, like, smiles at him, and she's like, I know, sweetie, I know, you know, like, it's completely yeah. understanding, but just let her have it. But she's not as bad as Sue Ellen's mama. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. There's nothing like that. No. And neither is Afton. I mean, we don't know too much about Afton yet, and I don't really know what her motives are, but um, I guess we'll see soon. I don't think she really... I think she... I don't... I don't know. I think that they... they I, I feel like the way her character sort of comes into it and just kind of is with J like how it is with JR seems very like just typical, but then I don't know, they right. just do, they just change it up with her and they keep her around for ages. And she's, I, 
she's one of the best characters i think one of the best um you know non non mains like non family characters with character growth and she's yeah. been in a tv movie after yeah absolutely um, i don't think that i i didn't love the reboot in the way they sort of played after a bit not so much that um you know the actor wasn't great it's just you know it just there were times there where like it just didn't really like f- feel like 20 years or 30 years had passed like no one had g- grown past a certain point you know at times well that's what they do i felt like melrose place did the same thing like when those actors came back it, it almost seemed like they were all just so sick of shit that they were all just nasty like well, I, do get nasty, that. Which... I do get that but i can see that in something more like melrose because they all kind of were either a victim or a villain whereas dallas right. um and knots had character like prop like they were more character driven plots not plot driven characters you know and so it matters what the, what they go through matters in a more in a larger sense to the narrative so like i don't know i just it, it's kind of like how you talk about um like the reunion movie for dynasty how we've got like sammy oh, yeah. sammy Joe just yeah yeah it feels a little bit like that at times with the reboot like even the way like um valine and sue ellen are in- interacting i mean they were barely yeah. interacting at all in the original show and she just sort of they give her lines that don't really make sense given the character yeah. you know Agreed. but yeah i still love that show but there were just things like that that bugged the hell out of me so yeah. just for the sake of like a cameo i'm like come on bring them in for a reason there's reasons right. they all exist together they've been they, right. you know they like you said they've brought afton back before but it was they i don't know original, yeah. they needed original writers on the new series basically to help is yeah something definitely agree um pam's feeling all kinds of horny and bobby's too busy for it and then he's like oh and then he like kind of touches her and she's like i don't want to pity fuck basically <laughs> yeah that's basically <laughs> and then what walks was, away yeah. <laughs> and then walks away um jordan calls with good news well his good news is bobby's bad news <laughs> because um you know everything's coming sooner so now bobby needs the money i think this time it was like a week i oh, know 10 to 15 days instead of a few months that he had. Yeah. Um, JR tells Jeremy to give Bobby the 15 million, give him $15 million straight up um, and whatever. And if you do that, then you'll definitely be in with, with the company and all that. Yeah. So like, it's just an incentive for Bobby to just snap it up, which will mean right. that like, he'll yeah, Bobby which will mean that he'll, um, you know, renege on his contracts with those smaller independents, which is what, um, and Jock won't tolerate that because, like, obviously, like, a, a Jock, you know, they're not, they're not the corporations, they're the small guys. So Jock's always, like, pretty, pretty tight about that. You know, you keep your obligations to them legit and constant. Yeah. So it's all to make Bobby look bad, at least as far as JR goes. Pam gets to work and there's flowers from Alex again. Um, it's Lucy's. Wedding, uh, wedding shower day. Sue Ellen is turned on by JR's evil laugh. <laughs> yeah. I'm telling you, this, this Sue Ellen stuff is so bizarre to me. Oh, uh, that woman. Um, like, this is that I part know. where you're like, oh, girl, what did we just go through for the last three years worth of shows? You know? <laughs> like, <laughs> I know. Yeah. Afton, Afton asks about JR. And I did make note that Muriel is not at this wedding shower. I oh. wondered why. She's not there. Maybe she had book. a test. <laughs> that damn Muriel. She just doesn't stay out of the book. I was like, is she gonna show up at the wedding? Um She does. She does. I'm like I, I did, know. But yeah. I'm like I'm like I thought I was thinking like she she like specifically her school friends, like <laughs> that's it. Yeah. She wasn't the, she didn't come over with some of the other people either. Um but whatever. Afton goes into JR's room and basically flirty and stuff, and they end up kissing. She sees Sue Ellen on her way back outside and says a little snide remark. Oh, I like looking around the house. Um, Jeremy goes to Bobby with the offer. 
Lucy shows Mitch all the gifts that they got. It's like all these silver things, pots and pans and bowls. Makes them incredibly uncomfortable. <laughs> yeah, of course. Jock offers a condo for them. Uh, Mitch uh, yeah, that's right. This is that part where you were saying like, where they sort of bombard him a little bit. And yeah, because you can see Mitch visibly getting kind of freaked out. <laughs> like He says, no, his apartment will be fine. They'll live there. JR offers a house when, she's get, when she gets knocked up. He honestly um, did that to just stir shit. Yeah, that was such a, a soon because you could see the grin in its face when he said it. You're like, oh my god, just make him work. make it worse. You can see it. Like you can see, he's like unraveling a little bit. <laughs> yep. Mitch goes off and leaves. Uh, Jeremy calls Jr. and that we find out that Bobby did take the deal. So I was looking around, and didn't it look like a sound stage to you? Did you notice? Uh, um, like. With the family, with Lucy and yeah, Mitch, and yeah, I I think it was that one that time. Yeah, I think it was because the background almost looked painted, but um, I wasn't positive because I felt like when we saw them having breakfast and stuff a few episodes ago, like it looks like they're out actually at Southwark. So I wonder if like they built the sound stage at that point. Oh, I reckon they would have, like, it would just be, but they would also be, um, like, uh, with editing and stuff, you'd have, like, it wouldn't all be consistent, like, some shots, there could be episodes where we see them outside normally, and then, like, for one quick scene later on, it might be a backdrop, because they've had to film it later, or something like that, you know what I mean? Like, the show makes, like, sometimes you notice it, but you generally don't, you know, which is a credit to the way the show's filmed, even after all this time, when when you see the land there, like when you're there, it doesn't look like it's as it, it's big, like the land, but that area isn't doesn't look as big as it did on TV. So I'm like, I don't know. It just looks like a soundstage kind of to me. Yeah. Um, well, that's like that's what I mean too. Just like about editing and stuff, the way they do make um, the ranch look massive and stuff. So like I have seen like because even the new show does that kind of like the big sort of like zoom over it and makes the front everything look massive it's definitely like an editing thing because i mean i haven't been there myself but even my friend was saying when she went and visited and stuff like that that it wasn't quite yeah. as large as she expected you know and then they even said like the pool is pretty small and they said that they used like a mirror for that but i'm like i don't know i i think i'm curious to know i don't think they said exactly um, when everything was filmed, like I would assume they filmed a bunch of stuff in the summer and then just filmed the rest on the sounds because then the actors would have to go back and forth constantly for episodes, yeah, like, yeah, which doesn't yeah. seem fair. <laughs> um, that's all I have for that one. So we have End of the Road Part Two. Um, Arliss and Afton talk to Mitch about his pride, <laughs> mm -hmm. that's how it starts off. Um, basically, the same kind of conversations. You know, whatever. They're just trying to be nice and blah blah blah. And he's like, "Oh, my pride, blah." Um, but I kind, they kind of get through to him. Um, Bobby tells Brady that he can't renew his contract. He tells him if he gets twelve million dollars in ten days, <laughs> maybe he can still, maybe he can stall a little bit. Yeah. Um, Ellie gets on. Oh, gets on um, Jock for loving Ray more than Gary, essentially. And, yeah, because we we kind of have seen, like, these little awkward moments between her and Ray, like, just in little exchanges here and there. And I think this is when it actually starts, because, obviously, yeah, Gary comes is. home for the wedding. I forgot about this, too, because I remember when you said, like, oh, you know, because, you know, later on now Ellie is. And this is exactly why, because I'm like, okay, that makes a lot of sense, because if he never said that, then uh, you know i'm sure it would have been okay but yeah she, so anyway we'll get to that in a minute um uh, alex is still after pam still up her ass um and why not like if you want to get laid keep going if she's not like totally crushing you down um mitz uh mitch and lucy have it out a little bit but it's more like a fun fight and he push she pushes him in the pool and then she jumps in the pool or whatever. Um, he's like, the condo will be fine, but the rest, no, you know, whatever. And they joke around and are cute again. Um, Brady isn't pleased. JR pressures Jeremy for the contracts to be done, like, now. 
Mm. Um, must be nice to be able to get like fifteen million dollars together, stat. Yeah, that's just like that. Like, just click your fingers, <laughs> more or less. I mean, he has to do a little bit more than just click fingers, but still, far, far out. Yeah, it's not easy to do anywhere and for anyone, unless you have it in like your vault. Um, Jordan calls Bobby. Then he finds out the drilling is tomorrow. Um, and he's like, "Bring your check. It's two p.m. tomorrow." He's like, "Can we move it to noon?" Because my my niece is getting uh married. Um, Gary and Val fly in. Jack and Ellie get them at the airport. Uh, Bobby and Connie are hanging out as he drinks. I guess because he's dicking his wife over. Um. Pam gets on Bobby for not being there for Gary and Val because he came in late. And he had no excuse that time. He was just out drinking with Connie. What the fuck? Yeah, this is, yeah. And then he, didn't he, is this where he like makes some remark about, I would really like some support as well right about now or something like that? I'm like, (laughs) oh, Bobby, you've been drinking too much tonight. Like, (laughs) and she compares him to JR, which is a bit harsh, but still, that's, yeah. true it's true i mean look how he's been acting he's terrible to her she's going through all this crap by herself like she doesn't even have a brother like nobody to lean on you know he's also like i get that he's being absent and all that all that but like you know when suella needed help and everything i just put her in an institution like i'm just saying that there's levels that's all like <laughs> right um that the next morning i guess bobby and gary are swimming in their shorty shorts <laughs> Yeah. Um, and just catching up a little bit. JR thinks Bobby, or seems to think that Bobby's going to get kicked out of Ewing today, so he's excited um, for the Wendell deal or whatever. Mm. Um, Donna wants Cliff to come to the wedding. I didn't remember Donna and Cliff being together as long as they were. I seriously thought it was like two episodes, but it's been like eight. <laughs> no, like, has it been eight, has it? Oh my gosh. I just feel like that. they don't really do much with them as a couple. They've always just got them they kind don't. of there as like political things and that like right. They're or, like, they're very back burner. Yeah. Right now. Yeah. Um, he brings up Ray at the wedding or you know, going to the wedding, whatever, and then she makes some kind of remark if we're gonna stay together. I forget what she said, but like I don't know. It's almost like they're she's testing them or something. Um Jeremy and the lawyer, his lawyer, are at Ewing. He, um, Bobby asks about the gas stockpile up. He's like, what are you going to do about the independence? And they're like, why are you asking questions? I'm doing what you want. Um, and then you don't yeah. see how it turns out. Because I was even like, is he at the wedding? Because the, we- the wedding's like, no. Um, um, we get this man named Clint who knew Sue Ellen from high school 10 years ago. Oh, no, from college 10 years ago, apparently. So I don't know if that's before or during her time with JR. I always put it down to like around about 10 or so years ago because she's been, she mentions that she's been married to JR 10 years. So okay. I just feel like it would have all been kind of like around the same time. Like she would have been in college. She probably would have been dating this guy. And that the thing that happened with them happened, but she's also, you know, and she probably would have gone to Miss Texas and met JR there not long later. Right. I just feel like it would have been yeah. around at the same time. And then did you recognize that man? I'm sure you have. He's a very Yes, Noah's place. <laughs> Monty Markham is his name. And um, where he is so able to things. play the most loving father and then suddenly turns into the most like paranoid freak. Ugh. He did so well, by the way. I know it was like a huge extreme in the way the characters were written for that show, but he's he always done. It's a very interesting, like portrayal uh, in just the, he molested and, Allison. <laughs> yeah, like, but just the way they do, like the very like um, you know white picket fence dad, and they and you know it's not the first time we'd seen her parents in those in episodes either. So we already had like an right. establishment there, and it was just. Crazy, but so well done. But yeah, no, he's great. I'm, I was glad to. See, I knew he yeah. appeared as well, but I was pretty sure it was this season. He appears in everything. He's in a show called Six Million Dollar Man as the Seven Million Dollar Man. Um, he, he is in the Golden Girls um, as Blanche's gay brother. Oh my god! Yeah, yeah. 
Um, he's in a lot. He's in Baywatch, like, the first year or two. Um, like, as a regular lifeguard or whatever. But, yeah, he's in a ton of shit. So, anyway, he's here, and he's Clint, and Sue Ellen knows him. Um, <laughs> Alex shows up at the wedding as well, and Pam seems surprised. Um, she's like, oh, what are you doing here? I was like, well, I'm rich, too, and, you know, everybody's invited. <laughs> I guess, whatever. So, why Anybody, not? Why, you know? Yeah. Even though he wasn't at like the barbecues or anything, or the oil, <laughs> or whatever. Um, Vale bought Lucy pearls. Pam gives her a handkerchief. Sue Ellen gives her the blue garter. Um, all of that's really cute stuff. And it is really sweet. I, I like that all the ladies of the show, like too. all the women of the show, basically sat in that room and just you know, it was really sweet. Yeah, and uh, Muriel walks first. So does that mean she's the the bridesmaid? Wait, the best? What do they call it? Best one? I don't know. <laughs> Bra- I forget what the best bridesmaid is called. That's the bridesmaid? I forget. Anyway, whatever. Um, She's there, but she wasn't at the other thing. No. Um, Lucy and Gary dance, and they're like, oh, this is our first dance, and they have a cute little moment. He's like, well, we danced when you were like a baby, and that's it. And yeah. Like, um, Donna and Ray talk, and she fixes his tie, and they get awfully close. That was and a nice little scene. That, it was, and they have that connection. Like, I felt it. Like, you know what I mean? Like, where her and Cliff just don't. I, I do like Cliff and Sue Ellen. I feel that when they're together. Um, even with that little talk they had, I was still like, oh, I do like them here and there. Yeah, it's always very charged. Yeah. Um, it's good chemistry. Um, Sue Ellen and Clint get reacquainted. Um, Gary welcomes Ray to the family because he hasn't. Uh, this is where Miss Ellie. Yes, <laughs> Miss Ellie goes into a bit of a viper mode. <laughs> oh, yes. Because Gary's like, oh, I don't have to worry about coming home anymore because Ray runs the ranch. And she's like, fuck Ray. <laughs> yeah. Like, <laughs> oh. Ray. It starts to become your Ray Krebs, your Ray Krebs. And you're like, oh. I like, I like that a lot because we don't see, I mean, besides her being a shit mother, we don't see too <laughs> many flaws Miss Ellie does, like, often. Um, but this, yeah. one is a, this one is a good storyline for her, though, because I like that it lasts a while, too. Yeah. If I remember correctly. Because it's, but it's rooted in, like, it is rooted in, like, ultimately the infidelity that she has to be okay with. She doesn't have a choice, you know? Like, but yeah, that obviously we'll get into that, but I also agree. It's a good storyline. Yeah. Um, JR and Afton uh, banged in his and Sue Ellen's bed. But Sue Ellen sees her bed disheveled. She, like, brings mm. it down. She, she just sensed it. Like, didn't she? <laughs> like, she saw, like... She just knows when, and she's just like, whatever, fuck this guy. And something about like the real JR is back. Yeah, like it's like a too good to be true thing. Of course he's back. You know, of course he is. And then, yeah. But how convenient that she has a man to flirt with now that Clint's there. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, well, she we was kind of being going. resistant, not resistant, but she was kind of keeping him a right. little bit, you know, until. Because there is. This. Right. Because her and JR were doing good, it seemed, for on her end anyway. Even though yeah. he had already banged Luella and I think somebody else. Oh, he was, um, he's just, oh, he's terrible. He's terrible. I know. He really is. Um, Bobby meets Alex. Um, and she's like, she wants to dance with Bobby. He's like, no, not right now. He's terrible, dude. She's like, okay, do you mind if I dance with Alex? No. And he's like, yeah, sure. Do you mind if I sleep with Alex? <laughs> yeah. And he's like, what are you talking about? Like, fucking go dance. I'm like, yeah. I would have slapped his ass. I would have like, you're a He just blows it. He does blow her up. He's like, go dance, Pamela. I have to find Daddy and JR. Such and I'm just like, oh. Such a dick. <laughs> it's just so dismissive. And she, she's, very, you know, justifiably freaking pissed off with him. Like, <laughs> It makes you want her to cheat. Like, I want her to sleep with Alex. No, I never wanted her to cheat. I, I just... I just saw it, like, I just saw it, like, I mean, that's just an argument. That's just a small little bicker thing, you know, like, and she, like, it's not that it's not about Through these serious, four episodes. Pardon? Through these four episodes. Through these four episodes. Yes. 
that constantly nah. are fighting. And she never was. Like, she's just throwing it at him because she's like, you can see this guy's interested in me, you know? I'm going to go, and then it's like, and fine. I'm going to go flat with him. I would have went and made out with him. I would have went and made out with him right there. I'd be like, here, look, watch this. <laughs> <laughs> um, anywho, Donna says that she was invited um, basically by Lucy because Lucy thinks that they belong together. Yeah. Um, and he's like, well, what do you think? And then she's like, well, what do you think? Um, whatever. So they know mm. they have chemistry and they need to get it. Well, he needs to get over himself. Yeah. Um, cause she, ba she basically does say like, I wanted you that day. I came to your house to like say, stop dating Cliff and be with me. And he didn't. Cause he's a tool. <laughs> um, Alex says all the right things to Pam. He's like, all right. You know, if you're like, he's like, I can't believe like your husband's not like interested in you. That's the craziest thing. Mm. Like, um, yeah. I agree. Get her, get her, Alex. Um, Bobby meets with Jr. and Jock in whatever the family room, and he's like, "I went out of Ewing." Um, he wasn't happy with what he had to do. Um, and what did he do? He got somebody else invested. So he kept, yeah. So basically, he turned down the uh, West Star deal. He kept with the distributors and he managed to stay in the good books of the cartel despite not being able to come into the deal, which was like the big thing. If he didn't have the money, he'd disappoint. He wouldn't be good in with it. He couldn't basically go and go and tell Jock, hey, we're bet we're good with the cartel again, which is obviously something he's always wanted. And so he basically Bobby was able to keep everyone happy while he was right. while in the end wanting to not walk Jeremy. away. Oh well, you know, he'll live. But like you said, it was all going to be stockpiling anyway. That's just, I think, I think that's good for establishing Jeremy as like someone, obviously someone that we see a lot later and then ultimately becomes very much like an antagonist, you know, in the series. So, yeah. Um, Jock, so when Bobby goes away, he's like, whatever, I'm done. Jock says he's proud of Bobby and how he ran the company. And he made their name better. He's like, we got a refinery, we got this, and we're back in with the cartel. And yeah. JR just <laughs> look on JR's face. That just crushed him. <laughs> well, it's the praise, isn't it? Because JR's made him try, yeah. to, like, basically pushed him to the point where he wasn't able to keep commitments. JR's thought it would make him look bad. But, you know, Bobby, like you said, kept him with the cartel, has managed to end only by finding them another investor so basically he went in there and he's like look i can't actually do it but talk to this guy he's actually really keen i've spoken to him about the deal essentially and that's right. yeah so bobby was able to do it really well and um yeah like you said the refinery is the big thing that they wanted and that they didn't have and yeah. yeah they're back in with the cartel and the company might be a little bit you know it might have lost money but it's in good shape and yeah. it's the praise. He says he's a hell of a son, hell of a man sort of thing. And you just, yeah, the face at the end when he just turns at that glass. <laughs> um, so Clint tells Sue Allen he's married. And she says, aren't we all? <laughs> yeah. And then well, they they're kind sort of, of screaming like, and dancing out. They're like, oh. close to each other's neck. I'm like, are they vampires? Like, I didn't know what was happening, but whatever. Yeah. <laughs> um. Jock tells Ellie that Bobby is out of the company and staying, thinking that she'll be very excited. Um, but she's very pissed. <laughs> yeah, incredibly pissed. Go ahead. What does she say to him? Uh, what was it? It was like um, something like, you know, she yeah, she keeps saying, you know, oh, and you're Ray Krebs. Like she says it like three times just in that little bit. And it's all about like now that he's running the ranch, Gary's not going to come back. There's no, coming back. And it's not... Yeah, and it's not just he's never coming back. She feels like because of Ray, there's actually no place for Gary. And it's like, right. and now there's, there's, you know, your Ray Krebs, who has not a drop of Southworth blood, is running my daddy's ranch sort of thing. Um, and yeah, I'll never forgive you or something like that. Um, yeah, for, I'll never for, forgive yeah, you. Yeah, something like that. For driving him away or something. It was something like that. Yeah. It was, it was yeah, pretty... Well worded. She wasn't even rude or super insulting, but like just acid tongue, you know. She's pissed. Yeah, and uh, yeah, it's good stuff. Um, I think we're in the middle of season four, right? We only have yeah. I think was it? It's twenty three episodes. It was twelve. So like we're just past the halfway mark. But anyway, do you have anything else to say about these four episodes? 
No, I think that I think that was largely like really good in terms of how um just once again just the Bobby and JR dynamic, you know, like um I think it's I I I just enjoyed it a lot more than I am um, actually remember like um so obviously when like season 5 and 6 come around and things happen it it's sort of much more full on and sort of um and it escalates really quickly it's not even just knowing that all happens in the future and this is like a sort of foreshadowing element it's like actually how you start to see like bobby change a bit as a character it's um you start and this doesn't happen for years but this is the fracture parts the little tiny fractures that occur between him and Pam that play out in larger ways in years to come, you know, because they've still got yeah. quite a few years before any full blow, it gets really bad, you know, and um, yeah. yeah, I just, and once again, the character writing, I just appreciate it on a, such a different level than I used to, you know, because, and it has been a while since I've watched it, watched it all through, so. I know, and I can't remember if she sleeps with Alex or not. I know it comes pretty close. I, I don't think so. Think I don't think she does. I honestly don't think she does. Because you know it that, like, close. Because like, remember, yeah, it, she? I think she goes to Paris or something, and he's there too, and like she goes back, and I think that something almost happens there, but then she like leaves. I can't remember. Yeah, I, I can't. I can't remember. I think I do vaguely sort of remember what you're talking about. There is something like I don't know if it's a trip or if it's like a or if like a, it's like a shared business trip or something. I'm not sure. And it's all yeah. heavy with implication. I can't remember myself, but it's something like that. I think you're right about Paris, though. So, yeah. Yeah, I think they go back because of the Paris Fashion Week or whatever. Yeah. All right. Well, um, thanks for joining us on Queers and Soaps for this episode of Dallas. Um, we'll bring you more in the coming weeks. And join us, follow us on all the socials. Join us, subscribe, like, comment. Um, if you watch Dallas, what did you like about it? Give us something. Tell us what you like. Are you crazy like we are and love Dallas? Um, even though we don't understand, well, I don't understand a lot of the oil <laughs> 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 and all the deals and crap. And when does Susan Flannery come on? I feel like she comes on like real soon. Susan Flannery, next- yeah, it's pretty soon. Yeah, it is. This- okay, so cool. And we'll get her for a season, I think. Yeah. All right. Good night, Uh, everyone. See you guys. Mm